everyone, my name is T, and today I would like to continue our talk about human trafficking. In my last speech, I mentioned that around 21 million people were forced into labor in order to raise awareness about human trafficking. Sex trafficking, meanwhile, accounts for more than $100 billion for traffickers' yearly profit. And sadly, we are partly responsible for human trafficking through our lifestyle. Therefore, it is important that we are able to identify it and, you know, lend a hand to end this problem. I, the research I have conducted will cover the many aspects of the issues. I will go to, I will go through some forms of human trafficking and what we can do as individuals to help fight it. First, I would like to go into forced labor. It is a sad reality that we consume commodities produced on the back of forced labor. Big brand companies have a tendency to outsource to sweatshops. This means that their workers are underpaid or suffering horrible working conditions. In return, these companies offer low price commodity for their consumers. A Forever 21 dress from Los Angeles would with a price tag of $25 would have cost $30 if the workers were paid the federal minimum wage of $7 an hour. And they would have been paid twice of that if they were paid the minimum wage in Los Angeles. However, I think with some effort on our side, it is possible to reduce and even eliminate our dependency on forced labor. First of all, I think the best way is to reduce and reuse. Secondhand clothing and thrift store are great alternatives to supporting big brand companies. Second of all, you can always do your research before purchasing. Make sure you are buying from companies that operate responsibly and or are under the fair trade system. The fair trade system means that you are buying from sellers that are providing good working condition and an adequate wage for their workers. And moving on from forced labor, I would like to talk about the most lucrative field for traffickers, sex trafficking. In my last speech, I talked about how sexism is a breeding ground for sex trafficking, particularly in the case for China's one child policy. This time I would like to go to, I would like to de to show you how globally devastating sex trafficking can be. Before that, we thought that sex trafficking is something that only happens in third world countries. That is not true. Earlier in earlier this year in January on in January, four people were arrested in San Jose city on charges of sex trafficking and six victims were rescued. They all they have a their age ranged from 18 to 54. And San Jose City is where we are studying and working and living. Knowing how damaging sex trafficking are globally, I think it is important that we raise awareness and we ourselves are aware of sex trafficking. Furthermore, I think by educating and raising awareness of healthy relationship and sex education, we eventually reduce a demand for sexual gratification and therefore decrease a demand for prostitution. And these have been protective and indirect measures for human trafficking. Now I want to talk about what we should do directly if we ever face a potential human trafficking situation. Signs like living with employer or poor living conditions and signs of physical abuse are some of the many indicators that the U.S. State of Department suggests that they uh, that to to identify human trafficking. And in these situation, if it's an urgent situ urgent situation, you should always notify law enforcement by calling 911. You can also alert the National Human Trafficking Hotline through the number one triple eight. 373-788. Human trafficking is a horrible business and sadly we are responsible for enabling it. However, we can take initiatives for this to stop. 
whether it is stopping support to sweatshops, pushing for gender equality, or handling human trafficking situation, it is important that we all do it. There is no doubt that the fight against human trafficking is long and complicated. However, it is important that we all must give out a helping hand because human trafficking affects everyone. I would like to end the speech with a quote from one of my favorite philosophers. I cannot make liberty my aim unless I make that of others equally my aim. Our freedom is interconnected. And thus, as long as one man is enslaved, none of us are truly free. It is our duty to upkeep humanity. Thank you.